All right. Hello, 14ers, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is April 26th, 2020, and we are counting them down. I know we are counting down the 50, right, guys? We're watching, we're praying, we're diligently seeking the Lord, just like our brother Enoch did. And that's what we're going to continue to do. I know I've been, you know, it seems to think it's been, what, four? It'll be almost five days since the last video. I gotta say, I was just feeling a little beat down for a few days. And, um, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm good. I thank you for your prayers. I know they worked. I know the intercessors work. I know all of it works. As I continue to pray for you guys and for your families every day as well, I want to say thank you. I feel recharged and re-energized. And we're going to keep going right through to the end. I wasn't leaving anyways. I was just needing a little bit of a breather. But more than that, it wasn't even really a breather. I got to tell you, it was it was just a, a weight of everything. You know, not just waiting for the 50th, but I mean a weight of just we, we so badly want the people to wake up. We so badly want the sleeping church friends and and those who 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 don't even believe we just want them to wake up we understand the season and time and we're trying to scream it from the top of our lungs to everybody who will listen to anybody who will hear let alone listen you know just to just to take note right and so with that i it started easing up a little bit last night and then uh this morning i was i was recharged and i'm good so with that thank you guys God bless you always, and we're going to keep running this race right to the end. We're going to keep doing it with Pete over at uh, the Disciple Channel, a little bit like we did today. We had uh, Leland Jones there for a little bit, um, but his connection just uh, it wasn't going to sustain the whole way through, unfortunately. So hopefully there'll be another chance where we can uh, have another discussion or a continued discussion with Leland. And... Hopefully he takes the time now to watch these videos again. I know his connection wasn't the greatest, but hopefully uh, two 30-minute videos. They've been sent to him now. Uh, our brother Edwin sent him the two videos, so that's awesome. Uh, I pray that he just takes that time now to, to watch them uh, as his time allows him to as well. And sorry, give me one second. <laughs> sorry, I paused there for, for a minute. There was just a, a text that came in, and I saw it was from our brother Frank. And lo and behold, it was an encouragement text. And of course, it would be from our brother Frank and his wife. Uh, so guys, very appreciative. I just stopped the video for a second because I saw it. It's precisely what I was just talking about, right? Right on time. You see how the Lord works? Right on time. There it is while I'm talking about it. God is good, guys. We, we are here. We're strengthening each other. We're encouraging each other. We're going to go into these words. We're going to go into, into this 50th a little bit more. We're going to get a little bit more detail. I was After the video, I was on the phone for over an hour and a half also with Charles. Uh, like I said, our conversations go on for a long time. But our focus was uh, Leviticus 23 in particular with what the Lord was saying in relation to the 50th. Guys, we're going to put it to rest here today. There is no additional 50 count. Uh, there's a reason why there never has been in, in, in all of Scripture understanding. There's no additional words being spoken for it. But we're going to show you, I'm going to show you this, the, the one word that, that confirmed it all, that gave us the aha moment, which kind of which irks me. Because it was an aha moment that I knew a long time ago. Kind of like when uh, when we did this first fruits one. When we realized after the Passover that we are the second first fruits, the first fruits with the leaven, you know, and it was at Pentecost. And then I went, ah, <laughs> Lord, why, why? Maybe the Lord was weeding some out by uh, by just that Passover not being the time, but letting us know Pentecost, right? We know, guys, the Lord confirmed to us the 50th. Not, he wasn't telling us the 1st or the 40th or any of that. He was confirming to us the 50th day. So we're going to get into that plus another uh, rabbi prophecy. We're going to clear up one prophecy from Rabbi Kaduri as well, 
or I should say part of the one of his prophecies. And then I'm going to go into another prophecy from a rabbi uh, relating to World War III. I think it was either shared with me by email or in the uh, Ministry Revealed forum, which you guys can go right here. You can go to the website at ministryrevealed.com. And there's a forum there people can join. I think there's 400 plus people in there now sharing news, info, all sorts of things. But before I get going and all that, I want to bring this to everybody's attention again. These two videos right here, they're only 30 minutes long. And if we can just get people to listen to at least one at a time, just send them one and then send them another or... If they can take the time because it's two separate videos, they can take the time on one for half an hour. And then on another day, we can get them to watch another. And I know we can't get them to watch, but if we can share it more and more and more. And in fact, there's even if you want to go to the playlist, guys, here it is right here. If you're not sure where to find the videos and you're scrolling or whatever, you can just come to playlists and it's right here. Introduction teachings to the revelations. All right, it's the two videos, those two 30-minute videos. And of course, people can print off the, the printouts with them or they can just follow along uh, in, in the videos as well. Only 30 minutes. And guys, the reason I bring this up, I, I mentioned it with Peter privately. I spoke about it with Charles privately. And it was, uh, Charles thought I should I should talk about it in a video because the explanation is is, is a great visual, if you will. And what it is, is these two videos, they're keys. Each video is a key. When you have the key to understand who the Gospels are speaking to, and you have the other key, which is understanding the timeline of two sets of seven for the tribulation time, six years of seals, the seventh rest, six years of trumpets, the seventh rest, when you have this understanding, when you have these two keys, you can open the house, okay? Some houses you need two keys if you use different locks, right? So think of it like two keys to be able to unlock understanding, to be able to unlock the house. And these two videos are the introduction to allow you to put the keys in, turn them, unlock the house, and now step in to an understanding where, where these parts and pieces that you couldn't understand before, to be able to understand how, how is it that, that Zechariah, uh, sorry, that Ezekiel says for seven years they're going to be burning the weapons. What would be the purpose of burning those weapons for seven years if the tribulation was over? Or why, why is the Lord on Mount Zion in Revelation chapter 14 if it's still tribulation? What is he doing on Zion with the 144,000 about to be sent out? You see, all of these things, all of these, these questions that people have had will start to become understood once they take these two keys, unlock the door, and enter into the house. It's what Charles did yesterday, for example. I know just about all of you listening understand what I'm talking about because you've come to understand who the Gospels are speaking to and the 14 years. But, for example, what Charles did yesterday in the live show, for those who had seen it, is he went in and he started talking about another piece that came to his attention and that he was digging on and understanding. And that's precisely what happens in this ministry. Once the keys have been given... And you could start to see and line things up like you have never seen to understand them and align them before. And it now fits like puzzle pieces properly. People start to get excited. Peter was saying that yesterday as well. It, it, it opens people's understanding so that they can now start roaming through the house themselves. You see, I might have shown you the kitchen and the pantry and I can show you the living room and the dining room and the bedrooms and, and the ensuite and different things like that. But now you guys are in the house. You guys can go look around the house all you want. The Bible's yours. It's, it's yours. We're seeking the end time understanding of the Lord here. It's yours as well. And you've been given the keys. 
So now you can go look in this little corner. You could find a little compartment over here. You can go look in the fireplace and stick your head and look up. You guys can go and find places that we haven't, that I haven't spoken about or taught on. Why? Because you've been given the keys. Just because, I mean, some people open the door, man, and they just, boom, they're running for somewhere. But it's best if you just open the door and start looking around to get familiar with, where you're, with what you're looking at. You see, and that's what we do here in the ministry. We show you around the house now that the door is opened. But once you have it and you can grasp in your understanding that it's been opened, you can go see these things for yourself. And that's how we work together and more and more and more gets revealed. All right? So I wanted to share that with you because it's just, it's a powerful, powerful piece of understanding. You have these two keys now. Watch those two videos. You will have two keys to now open and look around for yourself. Are we all going to agree on the paint color in this room? No, maybe not. Many of us will, but maybe not all of us. And that's okay. We're not going to agree on all of it, but we will get the majority. We will be in agreement for the most part because we've entered into the same house with the same two keys. All right? So I wanted to share that with you guys because I think it's powerful. I think it gives a visual that brings a lot of uh, clarity in the understanding of what it is that's happening. Now, let's go into this. Let me show you in particular where I wanted to start here with Leviticus. In Leviticus, you know, we, we were talking about this a lot already, right? We know there's a first fruits. This first fruits is the first fruits of the lord the beginning all right the one without leaven you see there there's no way it could have been us there's only one that had no leaven and that was jesus christ and that's why he was the first fruits of the passover all right we've covered that already we've talked about the feast of weeks and that the feast of weeks is 49 in the 50th but i posted something in the forum that had me question some things in the past but I, I had already moved on from it. And when I posted it, I should have been more clear because I didn't really, I, I wasn't really looking to, to open up a can of worms that, that there was a 49 count and then a 50th. But then as it started, I'm only human too, and I know I don't have all the answers. And so when we looked at this 49 and maybe a 50th count that followed the 49, I started kind of getting sucked back into it again because I remembered I was thinking about that a while back as well, a couple of years ago, maybe even a year ago, but it was probably a couple of years ago. And I remembered, I'm like, the Lord didn't give us the absolute confirmation of the 50th being June 1st for no reason. Okay. It was so supernatural. We know it's true. Many of you may not fully believe it's true because it didn't happen to you. But you should, those who have been following Ministry Revealed long enough should know that I have never spoken on anything like that before. The Lord has never spoken to me. I'm not a prophet. I'm not prophesying anything. I've never said the Lord told me this. The only thing in all of the ministry's time has been this word received through Jodel who interceded to receive it, to give it to us. And nobody on earth knew it. Not my wife, not anybody. I never spoke it out loud. I never whispered it. It was silence in my mind to the Lord. And it turned out an hour, hour and a half later, it came in an email in, in a way that was just impossible. So I didn't ask the Lord to give me a confirmation of it. Give me a confirmation. I knew because it was so supernatural. I've never had anything happen like that. And any, everybody that's been watching Ministry Revealed should also know I've never said anything like that. So that's why I bring this up. That's why I, I come to it a lot lately because it's only been pretty new since the 10th or so of March. There's a reason I bring it up because it, it's serious business. The word of the Lord will not be spoken for no reason. He will not give us that word, that confirmation, and literally giving us the word of right, you are right on target. It's, it's, that's not going to be for no reason. So, the, and again, the reason I'm bringing it up is this whole 50th, all right? If, if, he, if he was meaning that there was, an, there was a 50 to be counted 
after 49, then I don't see why I would have been given a confirmation for another 50. So as P as Charles and I were talking today, it was funny because he brought up his daughter. He shared something with his daughter. And because I, she's like the smartest girl in her school, or not the smartest girl. I think she's the smartest kid in her school. And so he's talking to her and they're looking at these semicolons and colons. And I used to mess those up as well. Charles and I are like, what? This one's a colon or semi. What does that even mean? A colon or a semi? I know what it is, but I don't really know what it does. All right. I'm not the brightest bulb in the barn, but it was funny because our one of a, another sister of ours just i think it was yesterday yeah it was last night she sent me as well an email explaining when there's a semicolon and a colon that it, it's explaining what this is saying and i was like oh so i shared that with charles this afternoon as well uh while he was just about to tell me what his daughter was saying about colon semicolon i said dude let me forward you this i copied and pasted and sent it to him he said he sent it to him and he says that's exactly what my daughter was telling me so it's very interesting the way we read this, but Charles and I kept going and we kept talking and I said, you know, I understand that. I, I, I'm understanding. I saw it with uh, Maxine that had shared it. I understand with what your daughter's saying, but I'm still a little bit, you know, why, why that wording still? So let's look at it in Leviticus 23, 15 and 16. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought in the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And then, of course, you know, entire, full, okay? And it's what? Complete, okay? You've got a colon, and then it goes on to explain it. Even unto the morrow after. So meaning from the day after, okay? Pretty clear. From the day after the seventh Sabbath, okay? Meaning... Here's your seventh Sabbath, that's your 49, from the day after, which would be the 50th day, shall you number, and this is where we got messed up, 50 days. Why did it have an S? Why didn't it just say the 50th day? You see, I, I kept getting caught up in this, and I know many others did as well. Why am I being caught off guard by it saying 50 days? This is the word that's been messing with us. Then shall you number 50 days. So if I tell you from the day after the seventh Sabbath, so 49, and from the day after shall you number 50 days, I asked this of my wife as well. And I remember having this conversation like a year or two ago as well. And I said, if I, if I read this to you like this, what would you do? And if I said the seventh Sabbath, you know, that means 49. And I said, from the morrow after that seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days? What would you do? Everybody, from my daughter, my son, my wife, everybody says I would count 50 days. Why? Because of this word number. Do you want to see what this word number actually says? And I should know better. I should know better. Many of us should know better. This program, ESORD, was designed for a reason okay it was designed for a reason yes for the gospel but for the definitions as well so we can have the definitions at our fingertips that's the reason we can have strong's concordance at the tip of our fingers to cross-reference at any time we want and you know what Maybe my fault for not having brought up this program for a while, the name of it, which is called eSword. Okay? E-Sword. I think it's eSword.net. It's a free program. Maybe if you have Apple, it's nine bucks a year or something like that. Everybody, if you could afford it, everybody should have it. And if you just have a PC and so forth, it's free to download. All right? It's free. This is why. Because I've been calling it for a couple, three years now. This eSword program is the multiplier of your scripture understanding. Why? Because we can do things like this. Click on definitions of words. And you see, sometimes it's immediately, it's the prime root of the word. In other cases, you see, we can come to this means seventh, 
ordained from, and we can we can follow. We can follow the trail of the word. But when we get to the end of a trail, it usually says the prime root, okay? The primitive root of the word. Check it out. The word number doesn't mean to count. It doesn't mean to start counting again. It means to score or mark as a tally or to record. So what is it saying? I'm so upset with myself. I'm so upset with myself that I didn't even ponder to look at the at the definition of the word number. It said, even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, so after the 49th day, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you tally 50 days. Shall you record 50 days? Shall you declare 50 days? You see, the reason it didn't say 50th day is because you were to mark them all off. You were to tally them. You're to make a record of the 50 days. Guys, it had nothing to do with there being an additional 50 days. And I'm sorry if it was me that brought in some of that confusion because in a, in a way I know it was. I posted something and I, I knew better because I had gone through this in the past. Do you remember, guys, this, this whole score, mark, tally thing? Do you remember where we were applying this in the past? Do you know how we've talked about it? This is a little off, off to the side note. But remember how I talked about it here with um, to tell? See, it's the same word, to tell or to number. See, it's to score, to mark off. The reason I bring this up in Genesis 15, not having realized it was actually in Leviticus 23, was because in Daniel, I've told you guys about this before, in Daniel chapter 9, when we have three score, remember that? I'll just bring it up quickly as a little side note. When, when people say, well, how do, we, how do we account for this counting? Well, first of all, we can do it from Psalms 90 and 10. We can do it from Abraham with Ishmael to Isaac and so many places. We can account for the 14 years, all right? But when we looked at it here, we see that they can restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah. The prince shall be seven weeks, right? Shabuas, right? These are weeks. What, are, what does weeks mean? Pentecost, Sa uh, um, uh, uh, Shavuot, right? Seven weeks. We know that this is seven years. But remember this part here? And three score and two weeks. I looked at this three score as they've always looked at it as being 20, right? 20, 20, and 20. I believe that this three score not only should have been a three score as many would have counted it, but that it should also be as score, as in marking off. One, two, three, and then the two. That it was a relation to like three years and a half. That like a three years and the two, almost like putting the two on the other side of it, right? That I believe that it had a relation to also being a score. And why? Why didn't they do it? Because the connection was understood to when Messiah came the first time. But we know, and we have proven here through this ministry, that Daniel 9 and the understanding to the end is also the 14 years, right? From the 70 weeks, which we're now in the end of right now. 70 weeks, 70 Shavuot, 70 Pentecost. The Lord God is counting from Pentecost. All right, we, we spoke about this in these recent videos, right? We realized here that what? That the rainbow was given at Pentecost, that when the flood was done, it wasn't at the beginning of the, of the Hebrew year, 
It was, it said it was the, the earth dried and everything. It was the second month, 27th day of the month. And then, you know, there's still some time left before you get to Pentecost. It was like a week off, but we know the animals had to come out. They set up the, 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 uh, the altar and so forth. So they believed it was approximately a week later that it was when the Lord gave the rainbow. Which makes sense because the Lord God isn't going to, he doesn't give it at any random time. He, he doesn't do things randomly. Everything is done with order according to his law. According to his word. So we know now, we've had that revelation that the Lord God is counting from Pentecost. And that's why we had the big revelation as well, that, that Enoch, you know, there was a reason why Enoch was 365 years old, years as days. You know, we had this whole conversation about it already. But what we couldn't understand was where the Lord God was counting from. Then it was revealed that the Lord God is counting from Pentecost and knowing that what? June 1st, which is the day after, just like the video we did that the Lord confirmed, June 1st is the beginning of the 14 years of tribulation, is the beginning of the first seal. It is the beginning of tribulation. That was the confirmation. So this, this whole thing of saying, well, maybe, you know, is there this other count and is it going to make it, does that mean it's going to be longer? And no, no. The Lord has given us the confirmation. It is at Pentecost. The day after, which is June 1st, the tribulation begins. So guys, it is not an adding of 50 days. It is you shall mark off, you shall tally, you shall record 50 days. Okay? So hopefully, a little sip of coffee. So hopefully we can now put that to rest. We can understand now and say, I got it. I'm seeing it. It makes sense now. We can leave it to rest. All right. Now, let me see. There is some other things I want to get into. Oh, did I want to go into number seven for anything in particular? I don't know that I need to go into anything particular. I just, oh, maybe we'll just leave that one. In relation to numbers that was that numbers was ex a fairly exciting one as well in number seven but i think i had that for another purpose i wanted to show you this this is um you know how we came to we came into the study and realized that enoch was taken on pentecost and being 365 it meant he was born on the day he was taken all right or on the evening of the day or the day of the evening of whatever that he was born is the day that he was taken. There was a reason for the 365. But what I wanted to see is I started searching around and I said, well, wait a second. If, if uh, Enoch, who was taken in a, in, a, in a like a rapture, what we call the escape, if he was taken in the escape, if he was taken and not having seen death, like we also did in the previous video, when we broke down Hebrews 11, why didn't Enoch taste of death? Where are we? In Hebrews 11, 5 and 6, why didn't Enoch taste of death, right? Because one, he believed in God. He believed that he was a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so we know that he would not see that he should not see death. Well, we know the escape of the bride of Christ. The 10% of the first fruit of the wheat harvest that's going to be given to the Lord is not going to taste death. Okay? They're going to be taken like Enoch was taken. But who else do we know? You see, there's no other reference in here. To, to somebody else being taken, but we know, of course, there is somebody else who was taken, and that was Elijah. 
See, Elijah, we know that he was taken that he didn't see death, right? He had the fiery chariot come down and he did not taste of death. Well, do you know when they say Elijah was taken? Here it is. This is, uh, as Elijah ascends into heaven, Elisha receives his mantle. Having received Elijah's mantle, Elisha strikes the water of the Jordan and they divided before him so that he might cross over. Here we see the ascension and Pentecost are two sides of one event. Elijah's ascension is Elisha's Pentecost. There it is again. What are we saying? Again, the two people that were taken that did not see death were both taken at Pentecost. When is the true Pentecost? You know, this is where we touched on this before. There's some will say that Pentecost, uh, uh, the the count, the counting of the Omer, the way the Jews do it is they do it from the, the day after Passover. Well, they never recognized Jesus, who was the Passover lamb, who, who was the first fruits, right? So they're not counting it from, from the Sabbath of the weekly Sabbath. They're counting from the Sabbath of the Passover, the, the, the Sabbath of the Passover feast. They're not counting it from the weekly Sabbath, which would make it first fruits. And then there's another group of Jews, which we don't see. You see, we don't see on this Hebrew calendar. But there's another group of Jews that begin the counting of the Omer at the end of the Sabbath. So you see, even within the Jews, there's confusion about it. And we've been telling everybody, we understand where it's from because we know when Christ rose from the dead he rose from the dead on their 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 literal law called the first fruits why would he rise from the dead on the first fruits because he is the first fruits without leaven okay the sheaf of the wave offering it's jesus we know from acts that he was here 40 days and when 40 days is over in Acts chapter, at the end of Acts chapter 1, he tells them to go and abode for a short time. You see, if there was another 50-day count, then they would have had to wait 60 days. At least, they were waiting at least 60 days in the upper room. And that's just not true. It's not true. They were there for a few days. They were to wait for a little while. Okay? They were there for 10 days. And... Here's that 10 days from here to here. This is the escape day. You know, I say the 31st to the 1st. The 1st is the beginning of the 14 years of tribulation. It is God's clock timing. It is where the Lord God has been counting. The Lord God, okay, the Father, has been counting from Pentecost ever since the rainbow. Okay? And now we have another witness. Isn't that interesting? Many people call these two the two witnesses, right? Some will say Enoch is one of the two witnesses and that Elijah is one of the two witnesses. I believe it's going to be Moses and Elijah, but that's up for debate. So who do we have? The two that were taken that never tasted of death. And here we have what? Two witnesses for what? Never tasting of death and being gone at Pentecost. What did the Lord confirm to us? Pentecost. Okay? Let's keep going. This gets really interesting as well. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it, but this is the Wikipedia page about Pentecost. And I don't really want it to, to go into all of it, but there's something in particular that some of you, um, you know, a lot of you guys that watch... Um, I think Israeli news, well, not I think, I know Israeli news live talks a lot about it, and I know there's a few others that talk about it as well, but I find it very interesting, and you're going to see why in a second. Um, we can see in Exodus, it's called the first fruits of the wheat harvest, exactly uh, the date of the Feast of Weeks, originally came the day after the seven full weeks, 
following the first grain harvest, the 50th day, known as the Feast of Weeks, uh, is actually mentioned as 50 days, Leviticus 23.16. But here's what's really interesting. This is why I'm bringing this up. Uh, just in this section here, we've, we've covered some Pentecost stuff, and we're going to get into a bit more as to uh, what, the, what the Jews have followed, what has been understood, what they expect at that time. So it's very relevant to us because we know the Jews don't spend too much or pay too much attention to Pentecost or Shavuot, which is kind of interesting because it was for us the first time, right? But it will be for them as well. But this is what I want to bring this up. During the Hellenistic period, the ancient harvest festival also became a day of renewing Noahic covenant. See, a lot of you guys, you know this, right? The no-hide laws. A lot of people say, oh no, the no-hide laws. They're going to bring in the no-hide laws. Right? They, they've been building it into the system recently. Okay? And I think they passed something. Uh, I think it was Israeli News Live was talking about something about it not too, too long ago. I think a lot of people were because there's a lot of laws that have passed in government in relation directly to these no-hide laws. But this is why I want to bring it up. Look at the timing. A day of renewing the Noahide covenant, right? The Noahide laws as described in Genesis 9. 9. Why does this matter to us, guys? Why does this matter? matter to us right why does this matter because we have the timing remember remember genesis 21 chapters is the same as john's 21 chapters that within it is hidden the these revelations of end times in them Remember the reason why in chapter 20, it's the, it's the resurrection of Christ. We're in Luke, Mark, and Matthew. It's in the last chapter of each. That's because why? In the Jacob story, the covenant is made in the 20th year. You see, when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, it'll be at the end of 20 years. Jacob's story, when his father-in-law makes a covenant with him, what? It's at the end of 20 years. You see, and if you take the first seven years out, what do we have? We have the escape of the bride at the beginning of eight. Then you got nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What do we have? The Lord said in 14 that he would go and prepare a place. And when he returns, I'll receive you unto myself. Well, that's exactly what's happening in chapter 14. It's the seventh year of seals, which is the year of rest. The place he went to prepare, he's returning with right he's coming on mount zion we go six more years the end of the sixth year the promise is returning right it's the same thing like we said when abraham was 86 years old he has ishmael who's the who's what the affliction okay tribulation beginning when abraham's 86 he has ishmael when Abraham is 99 years old, the Lord and Ishmael is 13. See, 13 years later, at the end of 99 years, and Ishmael is 13, God comes and makes a covenant with him. And then who shows up? Ishmael at the beginning of his 100, at the beginning of chapter 21. You see, We've talked about it before. In the beginning, John chapter 1. Genesis, in the beginning. Genesis chapter 1. We've seen this whole type and shadow. We've talked about it many times. So why am I bringing, up, why am I bringing it up now in relation to this Noahide covenant? In relation to them maybe one day bringing about the Noahide laws again that a lot of people have been paying attention to and that they're up in arms about. Why is it important? Why does it make a difference now? Why did it catch my eye? Because it was in chapter 9. Because it's in chapter 9. And why does this 
matter because the tribulation has begun the tribulation guys has begun see this is the escape of the bride in chapter 8 and the tribulation beginning so this would be sometime springish of 2021 when they would then bring about what now we can see and understand where they would bring about the noahide laws if they're going to bring it about at any point wouldn't it be in a place we can understand where we've had revelation of the understanding of chapters to years of books that have opened up to us i'll bet you guys what we're looking at is the noahide covenant coming into place sometime in the springish of 2021 a year into the tribulation and that's why i'm saying that that's why this caught my attention and the reason is as we get into this uh we're gonna we're gonna talk about and show some more things that that pertain to pentecost and and the the traditions and things that have been passed down to the jews and what they look for and so forth but then i'm also going to get into uh the the rabbi kaduri prophecy i think to clear a little piece up that people were waiting for on the sabbath after okay we're going to clear that up and i'm going to show you another rabbi prophecy that is documented and it has been also documented for decades and when you see that one, you're going to understand, guys, <laughs> how is it that everything can line up to now? I know, I know we sometimes feel, oh, it just feels like it's dragging on. It just feels like it's never going to happen. But I'm telling you, with everything that I've understood, with everything that has been given to us, with everything that has been confirmed, guys, be patient. And believe me, I'm speaking to myself as well. Be patient. Let's continue to share. Let's continue to diligently seek him. Because our reward is coming. It is moments away. There is no other year. And you're going to see it revealed with even more truth with even more prophecy how many rabbis do we have now like six seven that we've talked about that we've shown they know something is about to happen to them this year but they're not quite sure to what extent remember those videos we talked about remember how we said that they know it's either something to do with uh with a meteor something that they're either going to be attacked in a war something along those lines that's going to bring destruction there but they don't think it's going to be a complete destruction. They don't think they're about to be removed for seven years. That's why we we, we try to, we, I don't know how to reach the Jews. I don't know how to reach them in Jerusalem and reach these rabbis. You know, uh, uh, I, um, one of our sisters, Maxine, gave me, I think it was a fax number to one. You know, maybe I can send over some of that info. I'll look into it tomorrow. But you know we're trying to reach whoever we can to say no if you can get out now if you can get out now because you're that close you're that close you know then we say well who's going to who's going to bring about these noahide laws if israel's destroyed then who's going to bring about these noahide laws isn't it going to be through the jews yes but not out of israel you see most of them will have enough understanding they've probably already left and let's not forget how many jews already live in america guys okay where was this noahide law conversation going on in in america all right so it could be that that's where they they put these things out from okay that it would come out from america but israel itself jerusalem is about to be attacked and it's not going to be a light attack these rabbis understand it but just not to the complete extent that they had better get out now you know they they understand when the sea of galilee is full 
they they understood that when there would be in prophecy that there would be uh, uh, elections and no government and people will say well no no they have a government now no they don't it is still a provisional it is still a a temporary government what did they call it themselves they called it uh, an emergency government you see there, there's no such thing as as I'm going to rule for half the time and you're going to rule for half the time and, and that's how we'll play it out. We need to do it, but when you rule, you won't be able to make decisions over anything except coronavirus and the annexation of the West Bank. All right, for the Jordan. I mean, come on, that's not a government. That is an emergency temporary government so that they can still get things done that are needed for what? For everybody? No. That are needed for this period of time. We know they're still coming with peace and safety, remember? There's still a peace and safety that is coming. All right? So this is something we really need to keep our eyes open to. And our in our minds, in, in, in memory, in our minds. Okay? We know. Look at that for yourselves know perfectly i don't know about you but we know a lot of things very well in relation to end times and what's been revealed to us and put together over these last two and a half years and i'm not gonna say i know perfectly (laughs) you know i don't know any of us who will but haven't we been watching for peace and safety for decades you see peace and safety and then it's travail When does the travail begin? Verse 2 of Revelation chapter 12, right? We talked a little bit with Leland briefly today. You see, the bride's got to be gone. They won't escape, but there's a group that will escape. So we got to keep our eyes and ears open for this peace and safety, which, by the way, is being brought up now in conversation again. It is being brought to the forefront in Israel, which is why they agreed on their emergency government so that Netanyahu can move forward with what he wants to move forward with, all right? So they finally come into an agreement now to be able to go and annex, and they're going to be doing it by when? I think, what was it, May 31st or July 1st or something like that? So you see, it's moving, guys. They're going to come to this agreement on this annexation. So let's keep our ears to the ground on that. Now let me show you this. This is a this is an awesome video. This was shared, I think, in the forum as well. And I'm not going through all the video. I just want to share this piece with, um, I can't remember the other guy's name. You guys will recognize him from Prophecy Watchers. Um, but this is J.R. Church. And I believe it was J.R. Church in uh, sometime in the 90s, 80s or 90s, that which is probably around this time here. I think this is late 80s, maybe early 90s, this video. But he had, he came to discover that there's there's a there's a connection going on in the psalms right that in the psalms to years there's a connection going on okay so that this is the guy that uh, that discovered that and i believe he passed in 2011 but you're going to see i'm going to share maybe two and a half minutes and we're going to pause and stop in a couple places to to show this and and just to talk about it a little bit so let's i'll start playing it now So first of all, that was interesting. Just in case you didn't hear it very clearly, he said Israel was supposed to be a June bride, but she ended up being a September bride. Do you get it? Do you follow what we're saying? Remember our whole story when we've done these teachings on on Jacob and his two brides, right? On the two. You, we, there's there's two stories, right? There's two stories built into it. One is a June, the Gentile bride. And then you've got Israel. Then you've got the, the other time, which is going to be the day and hour no one knows. You see, at the time of the rapture, the ceiling of the 144,000 and then the rapture. Okay? Let's keep going. So on Pentecost, we had the covenant given to Noah. On Pentecost, 
we had the God's covenant made with Israel. On Pentecost, we had the new covenant made with New Testament Christianity when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. The question is, is, is Pentecost finished? <laughs> you see, more confirmation. They understand too. This was decades ago, right? They understand God gave the covenant to Noah, the rainbow, at Pentecost. Okay, there's all of these connections with Pentecost. Pentecost started, but of course Pentecost isn't over yet. Or is there something yet to come in the future on the day of Pentecost? A lot of people have thought that perhaps the rapture of the church could occur on Rosh Hashanah in September. Well, I my answer to that would be, let's not put all of our eggs in one basket, because uh, we do not know the day of the hour. We do not know when the Lord is going to come to take his bride home. <laughs> I love that part. You guys all know that part, right? He, he He's telling us, could it be Pentecost? Could it be the unfinished portion of Pentecost that the rapture, which we would call the escape, right? The like a rapture. I, I, is it going to be Pentecost that's unfulfilled? And then he says, well, some believe it will be Rosh Hashanah. And then he says, don't put all our eggs in one basket because nobody knows the day or hour. <laughs> I love it. Why? He's talking about a day that we could know. And then he goes to say, but some believe the day and hour nobody can know. And then he says, let's be careful. Nobody knows the day or hour. That was beautiful. But he didn't realize it. Why? Because they believe that it's everybody goes in the rapture at first. You see, the bride is going at Pentecost. Okay? The bride of Christ the one who the Holy Spirit has been working on for the last seven years. You know, you can say since Pentecost began, but we're talking about this end time portion, this 21 year big picture, okay? Like Genesis, like we showed, like John that we were talking about, the 21 year picture, which is the seven easy, followed by the seven of seals and the seven of trumpets. You see, what was he saying when he's talking about Pentecost? Well, when we come to, to Luke 21, we've talked about this many times. Come on, come on. Right? When it says, after the lesson of the fig tree, we have this being spoken of exactly the same in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's discourse. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Okay? Okay. It's a separating what was being talked about here and now saying this is to this group and so on and so forth. And what do we have? And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness of cares of this life. So that day comes upon you unawares. Whoa, 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 wait a second. If it's a day and hour nobody knows, wouldn't it come upon us unawares? That's not what this says. This says don't ca get caught up in the things of this world so that that day will catch you unaware. When we were in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it also says the same thing. Verse 2, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. But we're not going to be caught off guard by it. Those of the world are going to be caught off guard by it. That's what Luke 21 keeps talking about. The whole world, the whole earth is going to be caught off guard except, except those who are watching and praying. Except those who are like Enoch, who were diligently seeking him. But for the rest, it's going to be as a snare upon all of them. You see, but it's telling us there's a day, there's a day. And here he was explaining to us a day of Pentecost, which is a day we would all know. Jesus gave us the day. You know, uh, Charles brought this up this afternoon when he says, when we look at Revelation chapter 22, what about what, what it says right here in verse 17? And the Spirit, capital S, so we know it's the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit and the bride say come the spirit and the bride say come 
It doesn't say the spirit and the church say come. It says the spirit and the bride say come. You see, the spirit, I've done videos on this a couple years ago about it, that it's the Holy Spirit that is working for us now. And then it's the Lord during seals that's working to bring in his people that he came for, which were the tribes, the 10 tribes. And then it's God during the time of trumpets to bring in his people, the Jews. You see? So when he says of that day and hour, he says, oh, but we got to be careful. Here he is telling us about a day, but then says some believe at, at trumpets and we have to be careful because it's a day and hour that, you know, nobody knows the day and hour. But the Feast of Trumpets is what? The Feast of Trumpets is a two-day event called the day and hour no one knows. Why? Because two <laughs> witnesses are needed to confirm the day. Did you hear that? Two witnesses are needed to confirm the crescent of the moon being seen. Hence, they don't know if it's going to be on day one or on day two. And if there's cloud cover still on day two, then they'll declare it on the second day. It is called the day and hour no one knows. Not like Pentecost, which is a day people no. Do you follow? So when we go look at this in Mark's gospel, when we go into Mark, who's the, who's the left behind church, which when you guys watch that first 30 minute video, who the gospels are speaking to, you're going to see that Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is the left behind church. Matthew is to the Jews. That's why in Mark, uh, sorry, in Luke, Jesus says on the cross, Father, into your arms, I commend my spirit. But in Mark and in Matthew, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the word forsaken means left behind. Do you think Jesus was being left behind? Do you think he was crying out that he was actually being left behind? No, it was something being told for the, for the people to understand. It was prophetic for the future. And so when we come to Mark's discourse in Mark chapter 13, Remember I said they, they all speak the same? See, less than the fig tree and then see right here? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What do we see? But of that day and hour knows no man. Well, isn't that interesting? That of that day and hour knows no man, but what was he just saying? He was saying, man, is it going to be Pentecost? It's going to be complete. The day that we know, the one that Luke knows, the day that the Lord confirmed to us after 70 years would be complete. And it was relating to the Feast of Weeks. It related to the rainbow, to all of these covenants he had made. And then he says, but of that day and hour, because some believe the rapture could be at, at, uh, at Rosh Hashanah. What did Rosh Hashanah need? Also two witnesses. Don't let that, don't forget about that. It also needed two witnesses. So first of all, it's the first one of that day and hour knows no man. But it should also be the one that contains two witnesses. Do you remember? What if we go to the resurrection time in Mark chapter 16? What do we see? We see when Jesus shows himself uh, alive, talking to, to Mary and so forth, that he is risen early. We come to verse 11 of Mark 16. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Remember, they were to go tell the disciples, right? And they didn't believe it. And then listen to this. This is only found in Mark. And there is a reason for it. Mark. Chapter 16, verse 12 and 13. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. 
as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. So the Lord appears in another form unto two walking along the way, and they're told to go and tell it to the remaining ones. Do you get it? Here he was talking about Pentecost, which is the one we've been talking about, addresses the bride of Christ, the one where Jesus is given the gorgeous, glorious robe in Luke. And then we know the Lord has confirmed to us Pentecost. And then he says, but people believe at at, uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah is the day and hour that nobody knows that is given by two witnesses. And we've told you that Mark is the left behind sleeping church, which is why in Mark, not in Luke, we see when Christ goes to to the crucifixion and he says, whoops, in 15, And he says, what? At the crucifixion, my God, my God, why have you left me behind? See, first will be last and the last will be first. Matthew, Mark, Luke of the Synoptic Gospels is Luke, Mark, Matthew. That's why Matthew, Jesus had a scarlet robe. In Mark, he was given a purple robe. And in Luke, he's given a gorgeous robe. Receive me into your arms. Why did you leave me behind? I'm going at a day and hour, like my discourse says, that nobody knows. But before that comes, there are going to be two witnesses that are going to come. And we're going to deny these two witnesses and not believe them. You see? Because in their understandings, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, everybody listening... They've combined Luke and Mark together as one because everybody understands from the perspective of Matthew. But there is a bride that will be removed from the church first. It is the 10%. The Omer is a 10% of the Ephah. Okay, is the 10% of the Ephah. The ephah would be the whole church and the omer would be the 10%. The bride of Christ, Luke. Following? This is why he said what he said without understanding that the gospels were written to different people. I love it. see i'd rather be a june bride myself same with us guys i would rather be a june bride a pentecost bride guys a pentecost bride a spring bride get it not what's coming later Did you hear that? So, and I'm then I'll finish it up. He this this writings, these Hebrew writings, and the in the writings that they read from Scripture all relate to the wedding, and they believe that on Pentecost the sky will open up for a brief moment. Hello, guys, take comfort. This 
is the year and this is the season and time for Pentecost. At that very moment, we are told God will favorably answer any prayer. And he adds, therefore, we stay up all night to, quote, decorate the bride, unquote. This is called... <laughs> therefore, we stay up all night to decorate the bride. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Here's another one. Let's see what I had here. Um, Jewish voice. Like many Jewish holidays, Shavuot is known by several names. Shavuot means sevens or weeks. And because of counting of seven weeks, the festival is called the Feast of Weeks and is also related to the harvest and the first and the offering of the first fruit of the first fruits of the standing wheat. Shavuot is also called the feast of first fruits. The 50 day count gave Shavuot another name, Pentecost. You see the first fruits of the standing wheat harvest. All right. So guys, we can, we can put this to rest. We're not looking for any additional count. Don't let that try to creep into your thoughts. It is 49 and the 50th. It is over. The tribulation, the bride will be gone and the tribulation will begin. And I believe we can keep our eyes open for that uh, uh, um, uh, peace and safety. Okay? But I'm, I'm not keeping that as the focus. We understand what we're looking at here now. We understand this count. Now let me show you something else. This The Rabbi Kaduri, as, as I bring this slowly here to an end rabbi kaduri spoke about um you know we all know this right when there's when there's uh elections and there's no government but a lot of people were saying recently ah you know that kaduri thing maybe it's just baloney it's not true it didn't happen well people have failed to understand and i don't mean everybody i mean those who are saying it didn't happen they say that you know, oh, they've got a government now. Well, we already clarified that. It's They literally call it an emergency government, okay? So there's no official quote-unquote government. It is an emergency government. It is a, it is a setup. It is an in-between government because they will not have another government. They will be destroyed before, and it will not be till the seven years have passed. Right, we talked about it. We talk about it all the time. We spoke about it briefly with um, with Leland Jones today as well. There's going to be seven years of rest for the land for the seven years they failed to allow Jerusalem to rest since they've had it. All right, God cannot come and build on that land and build that temple. Cannot be started until it has been given its rest. Hence Daniel nine twenty five or twenty six when it says seven weeks, okay? That's the seven weeks of seals. It's not being spoken about because it's not their time. They'll be destroyed out of the land already. <clears throat> and the reason I bring it up is because when Rabbi Kaduri said this, the rest of the prophecy said, and when they, uh, something along the lines of when the two Benjamins or when they come into agreement on the Sabbath after, okay? What does it say? What did they say that it said? That Messiah shall be revealed. Well, guys, Messiah was never going to be revealed during the 40 days. They weren't going to all say, oh, this is the Messiah and he's being revealed to the world. No, nor did we say that would happen during the 40 days. We know that he's going to be, he's going to be rejected during the 40 days. Yes, there will be some that come to believe. There will be some Jews that come to believe. There will be some people that come to believe. But not because he's walking around claiming to be the Messiah. Right? Which is why we read even in, uh, in, in uh, Luke and in Mark. That in, what is it? In, in Mark chapter 8 and in Luke chapter 9. When the, the feeding of the 5,000. And of the 4,000 over in Mark. And you see the story and he says, well, who do the people say I am? 
and they say the prophet or this well just like the jews the people would say well he's probably a prophet or he's this or that they're not all they're not going to say he's the messiah they're not going to know that he's the messiah but the disciples the apostles then said well and he, jesus says well who do you think i am and they say well the christ the christ of god and he tells them shh don't tell anybody why he says because i must still be rejected right I must be rejected of this generation by the Pharisees and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the Sadducees and all those guys, right? He goes on to talk about, well, that's what he told us in what? He told us that, this is, this is all tying into it. He told us this in Luke chapter 17, right? This is where we, re- we can reveal the three times that he's coming, where he tells them, I'm going to be like lightning from one end unto the other in my day. When he comes, this this lightning from one end unto the other, when he comes in his day, is spoken about in Matthew. All right? It's in Matthew's discourse. It's It's in Matthew 28 at the end of his book. It'll be at the end of trumpets. We know it's at the end of the sixth trumpet, the beginning of the seventh trumpet. But then he says what? But first, in Luke 17, 25, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation okay and then he goes on to say that he's going to be 40 days there's going to the son of man will be 40 days as it was in the days of noah this 40 day period and then he says in verse 28 down likewise also as it was in the days of lot they ate and drank they bought and sold this is the clue to what this clue is the clue to the 40 days that we that i believe we're in right now that will end on may 22nd we're looking to see if there's going to be these events of uh, of somebody doing miraculous things doing signs and wonders and we know that this one relates to the end of seals because it's talking about them that bought and sold it didn't talk about that with Noah's portion, but it's talking about it here because it's telling us, it's given us a clue to the time frame that's being spoken about, which is Mark of the Beast buying and selling time. And then it says rain down fire and brimstone. But listen to this. This is what we're getting at. This is what I'm building to. Even thus, Luke 17, 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed is revealed the kaduri prophecy said that there would be there will be elections and no government and when this when this when the two benjamins come to an agreement it would be what the sabbath after when the messiah shall be revealed do you understand see in prophecy sometimes we look at things and we say oh well it's got to be the following week he's talking about he's talking about um about uh the following friday right the following seventh day but that's not true why can we say it's not true because we understand the wording you see the sabbath after when the son of man will be revealed the son of man is revealed even if we look at uh, uh, second Esdras, when is the son of man see and when the signs occur that i told you before then the son my son will be revealed you see and he's talking about what he'll be on top of mount zion and zion will come to be made manifest to all people prepared and built as you saw a mountain carved without hands. When is that mountain coming, guys? That mountain comes at the end of the sixth seal. He's seen coming, right? He's seen coming. Him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. So when the six years of seals are over, and it's the seventh year of rest, which is what? The Sabbath year of rest. Then shall Messiah be revealed. 
You see? Just like Second Ezra says, just like Revelation teaches, his prophecy just isn't completed, but we looked at it in man's eyes thinking it's got to be now. Messiah is going to be revealed. Not yet. He might be here for the 40 days, but it's not the revealing of the Messiah. He won't be revealed until the sixth seal is over and it's the seventh year of rest beginning. You follow? So I put that out there to help clarify and give understanding that Kaduri was not wrong. His prophecy is true. It's just not complete. It won't be over. You see, there won't be a government until what? The Sabbath after when Messiah will be revealed. You follow? That's when the government will be established upon the Lord. And they will be rebuilding the city and the streets come now the beginning of trumpets after the Sabbath year of rest when he's when he was revealed. All right. But now as we bring this to an end, there was another rabbi. There was another rabbi that had a prophecy. Check this one out. If the first account is word for word accurate and the final war, the pre-Messiah, isn't that interesting, right? The pre-Messiah war of Gog and Magog will come 75 years after the end of World War II. The armistice was signed on August 14th, 1945 and the Japanese surrendered two weeks later on September 2nd, which is in 1945. Five days before Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. According to the precise understanding of this rabbi, the Third World War is prophesied to begin in the summer of 2020. Okay? If the war would begin after this time, Shaz's intention was precisely 70 years from end of World War II. So, you see right here, this rabbi had a prophecy of World War III beginning 75 years after World War II. And World War II ended on September 2nd, 1975. I'm uh, sorry, sorry, 1945. 75 years later is September 2nd, 2020. Now, people are going to be all saying, oh, it's coming, right? It is coming. We've been prophesying, not prophesying, sorry, we've been explaining and showing through Scripture that World War III will follow shortly after Israel is attacked and destroyed. Okay? Remember that guy we, we talked about, I think Bill Ryan. We showed that video from June 17th, 2010, that this virus was going to go after Israel was attacked and destroyed in a short war. There would be a, a, a period of time and then they would release the virus and then with everybody in lockdown world war three would come now we know that the that the the elites the the illuminati the the behind the scenes controlling this all that they didn't get the timing that they wanted and we've talked about it before why didn't they because it had to be in god's timing the scripture said 70 years needed to be accomplished and here we are at the accomplishing of the 70 years. And the Lord told us when he's counting from. And we know it's Pentecost. So what did they end up doing? Everything seemed delayed to these elites, to those really ruling and controlling behind the scenes. So because they couldn't get their war in the Middle East that they wanted yet, they released the virus in China first. It was a purposely designed virus that was released in China first. Like he said, they would catch a cold. Then it would mutate and it would spread throughout the West and it would cause havoc. It would put them into lockdown. 
It would put them into lockdown and a type of martial law. Guys, this was given to us, told to us that people would actually be dying. It would be a real virus, even though it was man-made. It would mutate and in the West, they would go under lockdown. You see, they ended up releasing that now first to start to bring these things about. Why? Because unbeknownst to them, it's all in the Lord God's timing. And now here we are in the exact lockdown for the exact reason in the Western world and throughout the earth in the exact words that this guy spoke from 10 years ago, from something that was spoken 15 years ago. We are now living in right now because it's chance. Because all of these rabbis had prophecies that equal this time. Because the scriptures have told us after 70 years that the revelation was 13. The Lord would return after 13 and fulfill the 14th. And it equals 2000 years from his death and resurrection. 2000 years later to 2033 in the spring. It's not by chance. It's not kind of that, that the bride is a 10% portion of the ready, diligently seeking him like Enoch church, that portion of the church. And that those who say, my God, my God, why have you left me behind? Would be at the Lord's revealing when he would come at a day and hour, but declared by two witnesses that nobody would know and understand. Come on, do you understand, guys? Be encouraged that we're here. We're here. And what did, what did that go on to say in that video from 10 years ago? That we had to obviously reverse that order. So they launched the virus first because they couldn't make the war happen in Israel. Now here we are. The virus has been released. And now they're going to annex these areas of Israel and the Middle East isn't going to stand for it. The lion is about to come up from his thicket. It is Assad, is that lion. The Assad, the lion has come up from his thicket. And the destroyer of the Gentiles, Russia, the bear, is on his way. That is World War III beginning. But do, does it mean it's going to begin right away? When this, when the, when the, because the rabbi prophesied after 75 years. You know, 75 years later, World War III, does that mean right on this day? No. Sometime in that 75th year. Could it be right at this time? Yeah, it could be. It could be. It was spoken about in that video. It's spoken about in scripture. It's in each of the discourses when nation shall rise against nation. It's in it's in <laughs> Revelation chapter 6 at the red horse rider. It's in it's what else? Uh it's in Zechariah. Right? We can go into Zechariah real quick. Zechariah chapter 8. After seven years of being vacant and the Lord finally returns at the beginning of trumpets, there's Lord Mount Zion. It's the holy mountain, the mountain of the Lord. Let your hands be strong. But what does he say in Zechariah 8.10? For before these days, these seven years here, before these days, there was no man for hire, nor was there any peace. To him that went in or that went out or came in because of the affliction for I set every man against his neighbor. What is that? It's the red horse rider. The white horse rider time is Israel's attack first. The red horse rider is what? Peace taken from the earth. And then that they should kill one another. You see? What did the Lord say? Peace. There was no peace. Because I set everyone against his neighbor. What is 2nd Ezra talking about? Behold, the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. And bewilderment of mind shall come over all them who dwell on the earth. 
right? What did what did Luke 21 verse 36 uh verse sorry 35 say? You know, 34 is don't be caught in the snare, don't be caught off guard. Because why? Those who aren't caught off guard are going. They're going to be delivered by the Most High. They're going to be delivered like Hosea is talking about in Hosea chapter 1 verse 2. And then bewilderment of mind is going to come upon all of them. Luke 21 verse 35. The whole earth is going to be caught in the snare of it. And then what do we see? Boom. Then they shall plan to make war against each other, nation against nation, people against people, kingdom against kingdom. Red horse rider time. What do we see in the discourses? What do we see in, in particular with Matthew and Mark? For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. It is coming, guys. We are here. World War III is going to break out any time between fall of 2020 and the springtime of 2021. Understand, guys, we are here. The timing of the revelation of the Lord God through our intercessor, our dear sister Joe Dell, with words that were unspoken, the Lord God confirmed to us that after 50, the tribulation, the 14 years, begin. See this title? This is the prayer. After the 50th, the tribulation begins this year. You see? Guys, take confidence. Be strengthened and know we're here. The prophecies... And the scriptures agree in this moment, at this time. We're here. And even though family and friends and unbelieving friends and family don't want to hear us and bring us down. And we feel the weight because this moment is upon us. And we understand it with clarity being given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit working through us to reveal and to understand these things, to give us these keys that we can go in the house, that we can go in his word. Even though all these things and all this weight is coming upon us, we're here to strengthen each other, to build each other up, to share it with as many as we can. We don't have to be yelling it to everybody in their face, but to share it kindly as the Lord would share it. Because even though they might not believe now, that seed is being planted so that when these things begin to come to pass, when millions of people suddenly vanish and the snare and bewilderment of mind comes upon all of those who were remaining upon the earth, they will what? They will remember that we told them this was about to come to pass so that that seed will start to grow to all those who remain stuck in the snare that will come upon them once the bride of Christ has escaped all these things. I love you guys. I pray for you guys, for your families. I know so many of your families' names for which we all pray for. I've got you in my phone. We're praying for you guys. I love you guys. I appreciate your prayers. I'm thankful for your prayers. You have recharged me. You have invigorated me to just keep going to to get that weight to take that those hundred pounds off those off the shoulders to keep sharing with each other to to go to discord to go to the live shows to 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 go to ministry revealed in the forum to pick each other up and to share and to know nothing has changed it's the 50th and we're counting down the days right now there is no other time we're here. I love you guys. God bless you all. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.